Conservation Ag Update is brought to you by Montag Manufacturing. Hello and welcome to Conservation Ag Update. Noah Newman here, Technology Editor. Great to have you with us as always. We are back from the 32nd Annual National No-Tillage Conference. And I gotta say it was one for the record books. Not even a snowstorm could stop over 800 people from making the trip to downtown Indianapolis for wall-to-wall -wall talk about no-till, cover crops, soil health, equipment, and all things conservation ag. So some of you have been coming to this conference for decades, and some of you are making this a new family tradition, like the Beeries, who traveled all the way from Central Virginia. It's really neat to get to see all the, all the different the ways people do it in different locations and, and just the different ideas. There is a bunch of uh, just kind of stuff you don't ever think about that other people are trying and it's working and just a, a, a place feel like it really challenges, challenges your perception of, of what normal and, and what the right thing to do is. It's interesting to hear a lot of the cover crop strategies, um, just uh, like planting rates and uh, just methods for planting um, blends that people are doing. Uh, cover crops are something that's interesting to hear about. What surprised me the most is um, there was a lot of people talking about using annual ryegrass in cover crops and around where we're from in Central Virginia, annual ryegrass or just ryegrass in general is basically the weed we can never get rid of. So it'd be interesting to play around with that a little bit more with different um, termination methods to see if we can start integrating that more in our cover crops. All right, great to hear from the Beeries there. Now, one of my top highlights from the conference has to be the kickoff presentation from Connor Siebel and Dr. Fred Bilo, whose energy level, as always, was just through the roof. The University of Illinois crop sciences professor set the tone for a great week with an update on his seven wonders of the corn yield world. Here's a taste. Now, why is fertilizer placement so important? It has to do with the horizontal spread of each plant's root system. The horizontal spread of a corn plant root system is only six to eight inches. All right, see this right? Right there, that's a root, 32,000 plants per acre. See this, see this, this is an expensive scientific instrument called a rulerometer that we use to quantify that spread. And look, six to seven, in, six to eight inches. By the way, corn roots do not cross the row. I know you worry about that. Maybe a few fine ones do. 90% of the root is in six to eight inches. I know you've seen pictures of corn plants that are two foot wide, root systems two foot wide, three foot deep. Oh, it's called a tree. It's not a corn plant. Just dig them up. And we'll share more top moments from the No-Till Conference and a recap article coming soon to notillfarmer.com. Associate Editor McCain Vogel, meanwhile, was on the hunt for cover crop knowledge at the conference. Let's see what he uncovered in this week's Cover Crop Connection. Thanks, Noah. McCain Vogel here with this week's Cover Crop Connection. At last week's 32nd Annual National No-Tillage Conference in Indianapolis, I caught up with USDA's Soil Health Specialist for the state of Indiana, Amanda Kautz. Check out this simulation of a heavy rainfall and how a conventionally tilled field responds to the rainfall compared to a field with no-till and cover crops. These cutters go out into the field, you actually take a sample. So this is just a smaller version of the 100 plus acre field that these were pulled from. Um, again, conventional system over here. So uh, tillage with no cover crop, uh, corn bean rotation, corn bean wheat rotation here. So we've added a crop for diversity as well as cover crops and no-till. So this is gonna simulate again, a rain event. So we're gonna take about an inch of water and pour it on into these top trays and it's going to rain on the samples. And as you can see, this one immediately starts running off. So it's running off and carrying soil particles. You can see that water again is cloudy with that sediment. Um, this one over here, we do have some runoff, but it again is clear. And then if I move this front container, you can actually see that it's dripping in and infiltrating. So again, that's going to be held by the soil or moved down to your groundwater table and actually replenish that and be held there for your crops to have. This also, as it dries out in the conventional system, will seal and crust over. So it will prevent more water from infiltrating later if we get another rainfall event. Stay tuned for more cover crop related live demonstrations from Amanda Kautz in the coming weeks. Until next time, I'm McCain Vogel. Back to you, Noah. Thanks, McCain, and good luck to your Baltimore Ravens in the playoffs this weekend. Time now to go ahead of the curve with Casey Seymour, who's made a name for himself in used equipment remarketing for multiple dealerships. 
Now, the moving iron owner shares his thoughts with us here on the latest tech trends and what they mean for your equipment moving forward. Strip till rigs are the technology that's there. I think that'll continue to morph and grow. I'm, I'm waiting to see when they start showing, um, you know, what each shank's doing, um, where you're at in that from a from an, an autonomous tractor perspective. I think that's going to be a big thing to pay attention to as well. What do those kits look like? What can you put them on? Those kind of things. So over the next couple of years, just the amount of technology that you see is just crazy. It used to be every two or three years, you'd get some new amazing piece of technology and by the time you get that new piece of technology now, there's a there's already a new piece out there that you haven't even haven't even got used what you've got yet. So it's uh the next couple of years are gonna just it's just gonna continue to get faster and stronger and and more of that snowball effect that you see happening. And I think that's gonna be a big driving factor in the value of equipment. So I guess long story short is just pay attention to what your machine can be upgraded to as you move forward. Thanks, Casey. Speaking of upgrades, we've got breaking news from the annual Precision Planting Winter Conference. The company revealed its newest product, the Cornerstone Planting System. Compatible with all standard height 7x7 planter bars, the Cornerstone is fully integrated with Precision Planting Technologies and will allow farmers to customize their planter with a factory-built system that ships with all components already installed. Beta testing is underway and with successful field trials this spring, the company says it should be a commercially available for dealers and farmers in 2025. Well, it feels like Antarctica here in Wisconsin, so let's think about warmer days. This summer, when you're in the field, how can you tell if your crop is lacking certain key nutrients? Soil health expert Jim Horman has the answer in our video of the week. And if you look at this corn leaf, you, you see these little train tracks. When we see these uh, parallel lines on the outside edge of a, a corn leaf, that is boron deficiency. When you see the, the little train tracks on the inside, like we are here and here, that's calcium deficiency. And the reason calcium is so important at pollination is we're exponentially increasing uh, cell wall division and you gotta have calcium in that cell wall to have good, uh, uh, good yields. The other thing we can evaluate is uh, here's a leaf and if you look across it, it looks a little yellow. Uh, and so you'll see these lines. When you see the lines and it's not uniformly uh, green, it should be dark green across that whole um, leaf, then you've got manganese deficiency. And uh, we can apply manganese sulfate on not only corn, but also on, so uh, on soybeans, and uh, that will help you with your manganese deficiency. Great to see Jim at the conference last week as well. All right, that'll wrap things up for this week's episode. If you have a topic, photo, or video, feel free to send it my way, in Newman at lespub.com. Thanks for spending part of your busy day here with us. We'll see you next time. <laughs>